गाइज वेलकम बैक टू टूटोरियल्स पॉइंट टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट द स्लाइडिंग फिलामेंट थ्योरी विच इज गिवेन बाय ए एफ हेक्सले एच ई हेक्सले एंड जे हैंसन इन नाइनटीन फिफ्टी फोर दिस स्लाइडिंग थ्योरी इज एक्चुअली द स्लाइडिंग थ्योरी ऑफ मसल कॉन्ट्रेक्शन दिस थ्योरी एक्सप्लेन्स द मसल कॉन्ट्रेक्शन इन अ वेरी ब्यूटिफुल वे इफ यू रिमेंबर the structure of myofibril the functional and the smallest unit of a muscle now this myofibril contains a contractile unit which is called as sarcomere actually this whole structure is made up of thin and thick filament this blue line is showing thin filament and this red line is showing the thick filament this thin filament and thick filaments are actually the proteins thin filament is the actin protein and thick filament is the myosin protein this whole structure is a arrangement of this actin and myosin protein now let's learn about how this contraction or the muscle contraction occurs through this sliding theory now in this structure you can see this unit sarcomere is the unit between the two z lines what is this z line z line is a zigzag line zigzag line present between the actin protein here also zigzag line is present between the actin protein and the structure between this z line is called as sarcomere and the actual contraction occur between these z line or i can say actually the contraction which occurs occurs in this contractile unit the sarcomere unit now when i am saying contraction then the first thing which comes into our mind is that contraction means something becoming smaller so if i am saying the sarcomere is becoming contracted or becoming smaller does it means these filaments this thin and thick are they actually becoming smaller actually no they are not becoming smaller but they are coming closer to each other let's see how now again this structure thin thick filament now if you remember the mid line between this sarcomere is known as m line and the space where only myosin is present is called as h zone is called as h zone a zone where no actin is present only myosin is present so when contraction occur at the time of contraction z lines come closer to each other the myosin does not moves it makes the actin moves to inside position this side actin moves to this side and this side actin will move to this side so they will move like this because of that what will happen they come close to each other and h zone becomes shorter or almost absent when they contracts so we can say there is no shortening of thick and thin myosin occur but actually they come closer to each other so that they can shorten the h zone no what is this sliding theory as these actin myosin are moving on this myosin suppose this is myosin this is actin as the actin is moving on this myosin that is why it is called as sliding theory now let's see how this sliding theory occurs actually in this sliding theory we know this one is the myosin protein the thick filament this is the actin filament or the thin filament now what happens actually is myosin contains two parts a tail part and a head part and on actin actin contains a a uh, reason where this head is attached this side is called as 
active site or I can say actin binding site. Normally, this site is closed with other proteins like troposin. It inhibits the combination of head and the actin, myosin or the actin. But when calcium comes through the process of the impulse, then this calcium attaches to the tropomycin so that it removes from the inhibit site. When it moves or it comes in contact with the site, then there the site of combination of actin and myosin is exposed so that head can easily attach with the active site with the help of with the help of myosin movement let me explain you this movement for example suppose this is the myosin and these this is the head of this myosin now this is the actin layer now when calcium come the active side is open now myosin attaches and flick and or i can say push the actin inside so that it can move inside now when it makes the movement then it have to be removed how will it remove one atp come and it remove the myosin head now when myosin head is removed it again attaches to other active site of the actin then again it flicks the actin to inside that is how sliding between a myosin and actin occurs you can see here also myosin head is attached to the actin but to remove this when the uh, when actually this conformational or the binding between myosin and actin is occurring at that time ATP and PI is attached. Let me tell you why. Actually, to remove the head from actin side, we need a ATP. When head is removed from this side, then ATP converts into ATP and PI. When it again attaches with another side, at that time ATP and PI is already there. But once it attached, it get removed with that push and pull movement. Now we know how this sliding movement between actin and myosin occur. So this animation part will show you how actually this sliding occurs. These red lines are the actin proteins and these green ones are the myosin protein. So here actually myosin is pulling, myosin, is, myosin head is pulling the actin inside this side to this side and this actin to this side that is how contraction occur h zone is shortening you can see here this is s zone and it is shortening but there is no shortening of the thin and thick filament so in this video we have learned about the sliding theory and we have learned how muscle contraction occurs through the sliding theory in the next video, we will learn about the muscle contraction in detail. Thank you. Tutorialspoint.com Simply easy learning.